Hello, I'm Richard Jacob from Matrix Science and today I'm going to be installing Mascot Server onto a Windows computer. We're going to use the Windows IIS Internet Information Server as the web server. I have uh, previously downloaded the Mascot Server self-extracting package with the Mascot installers and uh, Perl installers and so on. Um, so what I need to do is take this self-extracting package, double click it. So I'm going to accept the defaults, uh, C temp and extract. And during this whole screen capture process, uh, there's going to be certain tasks that take some time to process. And I may edit the waiting time out. Um, you really don't need to watch the bar go by as you are now and uh, I won't miss any of the important steps that require user uh, intervention or, or entering or a choice or something um, but I will just skip through some of the waiting parts so that's uncompressed and if I open up the folder um, here I have all of the required software the standard procedure is to install IIS, then Active State Perl, followed by Mascot. And uh, there's a couple of things you should look at first, release notes and the manual. Um, I'm going to go straight to the manual. I'll open that up in Adobe Reader, Reader. Make it a little bigger. And what I want to do is go to the installation chapter for Windows, which is chapter three. And I'm installing on a Windows 10 machine. Okay, let's expand that again so we can see what it says. I'm installing on a Windows 10 computer and Windows 8, um, the installation options are pretty much the same and so this is for installing the web server IIS and we need to go to programs and features turn Windows features on or off and we want to install the internet information services and what we do is we look at this screenshots here and uh, go through and make sure we select all of the options that we see here. Um, and that will mean that we have everything that's required for the mascot server to use. So we're going to expand that window. And we've got management tools. We want the, all the um, IIS 6 backwards compatibility management tools. Um, we also want the management console and the scripts and tools the standard IIS management console and the IIS management script and tools. And now I'm going to install the World Wide Web services part and expand each section and under application and development features. I'm going to select CGI, common HTTP features, default document, directory browsing, HTTP errors and static content. Under health and diagnostics, I want HTTP login, performance features, static content compression, and security request filtering. So once I've done all of that, I always go back to the screenshot here and just go back and double check that I have everything that's required. And uh, that looks good. Shrink that down and then say OK to these options. The applications that Windows is installing are included on the hard disk of the computer and we don't need to uh, insert a CD or DVD or anything. They're all there and ready to install. OK, so Windows has carried out that task. So we'll close that option and we can say goodbye to the programs and features. So the next step is to install Perl. 
and uh, we want to install Perl for the 64-bit version of Windows. I don't recommend using a 32-bit version of Windows anymore. This is a 64-bit uh, system. So we'll take that X64 Active Perl. And you have to use the uh, version of Perl that ships with Mascot. Versions of Perl released after Mascot Server are not compatible. And that's why you want to stick with the version of Perl that's included in the download package. Okay, we're opening the release notes. There we go. Um, one thing we haven't tested yet is, is the web server up and running? Okay, there we go. So welcome in multiple languages. The web server is running and we've installed Active State Perl. So the next step is to install Mascot Server itself. And we, uh, to do this, we run the setup 64 executable here. And we say yes. Set the license terms. And uh, this has an older version of Swissprop. And to save time, we can skip installing that and we uh, update the Swissprop immediately after installing Mascot. Uh, if you are somewhere where you have uh, a slower internet connection, then you might want to install the default version that ships with the system, uh, just so you have something straight away to search. We're going to accept the IIS web server, and we're not going to install Swissprop, and we're going to accept the default location. The installer always chooses the drive with the most free space, and in my system here, it's the D drive. And we want to accept the default website and the default name of mascot. We're not using cluster mode. This is a standalone system. And install. Okay, Mascot has installed, and uh, we're going to open the Mascot server status page. Okay, uh, we're now ready to register the Mascot server. We want to register online. And we have to enter a product key. The product key, uh, once it's registered, is linked to that hardware. Uh, can't be used anywhere else. So we'll use the product key. And you want to fill out your contact information here. And the email address you use will be the one where the license is sent to. Okay, I filled out that form. Sometimes the person registering the mascot server is not the person um, who holds the license. If that's the case, you would want to put the PI or the license holder emails address here and then put uh, your email address here. And in this way, the license will be sent to both the PI and to you. OK, uh, sign up for the newsletter. And then we've got the license agreement and I'm going to accept those terms and create license. So I'm now going to go look at my email and then I'm going to uh, download and save that license file that would have been sent to me. Here's the license file. All right, I'm going to take this license file and copy it. I'm going to go to the D drive where mascot was installed. INET pub mascot config directory. In there we have a directory called license DB and I'm going to paste that there. So now when I go back um, to the web browser and I can click on the link to the database status page and it comes back and says yes it's found the license and then we can view the database status. Now at the top it reports that license number and, and we can see a bit of information about the computer. It's a quad-core processor with hyper-threading enabled. And that gives us eight uh, threads. 
and 0 to 7 are the actual thread numbers and it's going to be as this is a one CPU license which is good for four cores or eight threads in this case um, it's going to use 0 to 7 threads. Um, right now it says that SwissProt is not in use that's because we didn't install it so what we need to do uh, is actually go uh, or, or download that database So I'm going to go to the welcome page, the local welcome page, configuration editor, database manager. Okay, it recognizes the SwissProt database. we we'll import that setting. Now Mascot is, uh, has recognized the database. Um, it's a predefined database. Actually by accepting the database setup Mascot has already gone ahead and started a task to download the latest version of SwissProt. And we'll come back in five minutes time when this database has been downloaded, uncompressed and activated. And now the database is in use. And the next step is to do a quick test search. So we'll go back to the local welcome page there access the mascot server uh, and what i like to do is open up one of the example reports for the msms iron search and then do search selected and we can just take these defaults here and start search and within a minute or so uh, the search will have run and we'll know that the mascot server has been successfully installed and there we go the mascot server has been installed on a Windows 10 computer using IIS as the web server and if you have any questions about this process please contact support at matrixscience.com thank you